Mike's machete is based on a Malaysian type called a parang and is favored by special forces like the British SAS. It has three essential working parts. The point and front area used for incising and for slicing. The middle part here where it bows out is your heavy lifter for uh, your chopping and your cutting. And then this fine curved part right here is what we use for our carving and our whittling. In the jungle, the machete is the most valuable survival tool. It's so useful Mike can survive with nothing else. No lighter, no water canteens, nothing. So far, I've had all the creature comforts at home for me. And tonight, it's just me and her. It's getting late, and without his hammock and mosquito net, Mike needs to think about a different bed for the night. Unfortunately, I'm still in the lowlands, which isn't ideal for a campsite, but I'm running out of daylight, so I'm going to have to go ahead and make myself a hooch. So tonight I'm going to be sleeping in a swamp bed. What we have is a swamp bed and an A-frame. The swamp bed simply has four little tripods of about two foot long sticks lashed together and then spread out. You can use jungle vine to tie your tripods together, but Mike uses his boot laces. Two six foot long pieces of wood for your bed frame, then about 20 planks to give you the flat part. For the A frame, all you have to do is four six foot pieces in the shape of an A in the front, in the shape of the A in the back, and then one six to seven foot long piece for your ceiling structure. Lash them together with a simple knot. Lay a bunch of palm fronds down for your roof, and you'd be ready to go. So far, I've had everything that I need to survive. And even though the machete is the most important tool out here for survival in the jungle, I'm going to show you that you can still get by without it. Everything that I'm going to use to make my hooch tonight is going to be stuff that I've found foraging around on the forest floor. That's why it's called a debris hut. There's still plenty of daylight, but with no tools, Mike knows he needs extra time to build a secure, dry shelter to keep him safe from the jungle and its nighttime dangers. This tree right here gives me very good shelter on three out of four sides, so I don't have to worry about any big creatures coming up on me in the middle of the night. Mike gets close into the tree, right under its canopy for added protection from the notoriously heavy jungle rains. He makes a sleeping platform from logs to get him off the ground. This should keep him dry if water gathers beneath him. Throw some green stuff down for my bedding, and then just lay some sticks that I find laying about up against the uh, base of the tree for kind of like a lean-to, and that'll be pretty much be my shelter for the night. This takes some work, even though you're just picking stuff up off the ground. That's part of the reason why you have to stop and give yourself some time to make camp. I'm in my next hooch, my debris hut, and it's looking pretty good from inside. A little bit of a hole right there, but most of it looks pretty watertight. So even if it pours down rain, it should be pretty good. Now that was not a five-star hotel night. Everyone imagines they know the dangers of the jungle. But Mike knows that the real killers out here are smaller than you might think. There was a mosquito heaven out here. So I had to stay covered up. Couldn't even take my boots off. And I had to sleep pretty much underneath my scarf just to be able to breathe. They were that thick. The bad thing about the mosquitoes isn't the miserable itch fest that they cause. Is it's all the diseases that they carry. I mean, they're a jaguar. Anaconda, caiman, piranha. It'd be a sad thing to survive all that and just to die from some disease. The bottom line is, a tiny mosquito is more likely to kill you than any other creature in the rainforest. 